It's up percenters, I'm Ratsa Joey, you guys are awesome, and this is DTL. Straight away, let's roll into what DTL is. DTL is Deoxys, the 170 hit point Psychic Plasma X, which acts as, like a plus power for any plasma Pokemon you haven't played that isn't called Deoxys X. Thunderous X, the quick hitting energy accelerator, which is also plasma and has 170 hit points as well. And Lugia, the late game pressure Pokemon, which can take free prizes if you knock out a weakened X Pokemon, and was the first plasma X to be introduced to us. So now we know what makes a deck, how do you go about playing it? Well, from what I've seen, Thunderous X is your principal start, as it's your key form of energy acceleration, but the deck doesn't suffer if you start with Deoxys. And the deck starting with Thunderous doesn't only judge your early game damage output, most people would think that with the three different Pokemon in the deck being Plasma, that of course the deck would run Plasma Ball as its key means to grab a Pokemon for your bench. But DTL doesn't use Plasma Ball as its primary recruitment. Instead, it uses Ultra Ball. All because you want a consistent way of dumping energy into the discard pile so that Thunderous can accelerate it onto your field and effectively give you three attachments a turn. Three if you hit Colorless Machine, but let's not get too greedy. Now that's going to leave some players thinking, lead with just 30 damage a turn? That's not going to be enough. And yes, normally that would be true. A straight 30 with knocking to the opponent's bench does seem like low damage output when compared to Landorus. That's able to hit for 30 and 30 to a bench Pokemon for effectively the same cost. Now this is balanced out by the fact that Thunderous is giving a plus to your bench where Landorus sets up later KOs. But Thunderous's attack isn't 30 with a plus, it's potentially 70 with a plus, due to Deoxys being able to back Thunderous with Power Connect. And this is where this deck starts coming into its own. A basic that could attack for between 30 and 70 damage for 1 energy is not something to ignore, but even with the option for 70 damage for 1 energy, I still wouldn't personally invest in 4 Deoxys on the bench at once, as this only leaves you with space for one other Pokemon on your bench, and seeing as you may need two positions to set up secondary attackers, and to give you somewhere to port the energy you're accelerating, as you can set up Deoxys for attacks but you really want a consistent stream of Thunderuses for your end of the game, and you also want space for Lugia, or your optional tech, which I'll talk more about in a short while. Now moving on to Deoxys. Now we've already established that he's in this deck for his ability to increase the damage output from this deck's other key components, but it also has the ability to act as this format's new Mewtwo. In fact, I can see us entering the next format with talk of Deoxys Wars, akin to how we entered last format with Mewtwo Wars. And to back it up, Deoxys can be set up in one turn with one attachment from hand and a Color Rush machine. Now it can be said that this would make Deoxys less consistent than Mewtwo's double colorless X-Ball, with Deoxys requiring two cards. But with Color machine being an item card, you can easily use Skylar to grab it and simply improve consistency. Plus, the potential damage output for Deoxys can be substantial without having to invest extra energy onto Deoxys. That's not to say you won't ever have to invest extra cards as Deoxys can still benefit from Hypnotoxic Laser, just like any other deck. But Deoxys' damage modifier is energy on the defending Pokemon. You can get away with minimal energy investment on Deoxys while delivering an average of 90 damage against most defending Pokemon, and up to 150 for some of the format's bigger attacks. Factoring in the Hypno Bank, that's between 120 to 180 damage. So that's either a guaranteed two-shot against anything in the format, or a possible one-shot against most of the format, excluding factors such as Eviolite and normal types with Aspertia Gem out. So that leaves us with Lugia X, who, to be honest, I have the least to say about, mostly because he has the simplest role in this deck. His whole purpose is to clean up in the late game and to imply pressure by being an ever-present threat. In any given game within the current format, Two prizes left tends to be the late to end game. Having Luke on the board means that your opponent now has to treat three prizes left as a late game. And even though it's just one prize difference, that difference counts and will add enough pressure to put the game into a position that benefits you while extremely limiting your opponent's options. All of this combined with the A spec Scramble Switch makes Lugia a tour de force. The ability to set up your board without even showing your opponent to Lugia, and then just placing down the Lugia, playing your scramble switch, and then swinging for your last three prizes, takes Lugia, a card that wasn't too far from being wasted potential, and makes it a constant threat, even if it doesn't on the board. Heck, 
Lugia could even be such an influential and devastating card that it could probably use to pressure your opponent even if there isn't one in your list. Just making them think that you can drop it at any moment and take the game is an amazing ability to have. Although I can see most people keeping Lugia in the list, as the ability to actually take the three prizes in one turn is more beneficial than the threat of taking three prizes. But if you love to play mind games with your opponent, then why not give it a try? But I've only covered his ability to apply pressure. But what about numbers? How much do we have to set up the field to be able to claim three prizes in one to attack? Well, assuming that you have to swing for 180 total and Lugia attacks for 120 damage, so Right away we see a split of 60. Now of course Deoxys can increase the damage, and 3 Deoxys means that Lugia is attacking for 150, meaning a split of 30. Now some people would instantly jump on the idea to use Hypnotoxic and Burbank, but that knockout comes from Poison and not from Lugia, so you only claim 2 prizes instead of 3. But this leads us to a real key to claiming prizes with Lugia, setting up the KOs. Setting up the KOs we have Thunderous that attacks for a base of 30, we have Deoxys that attacks from base of 30. I'm starting to see a pattern here, but there is something else that I can attack for 30. And it's the first tech I want to cover for this deck. That card is Plasma Chiron. For Water Colorless, it's able to deliver 30 damage to the active and 30 to the bench. This enables you to set up multiple targets for Lugia while also fulfilling another problem this deck has. Everything is an X. Sigilyph completely walls the step with Chiron. Or Snorlax, but one card at a time, people. So, same as Deoxys, Kyram can start swinging the same turn it comes into play, and it can be used to set up multiple targets for Lugia to knock it for three prizes. And it's a non X, so it can attack through decks that stop Xs. It can also deliver 120 damage for two water and two colorless energy, which means that if you're against Kling Clank Rebellion, you have a way to deal with Plasma Clang, even if that does mean that Kyram can't attack next turn. Heck, your Xs can go to work again now anyway. Now, as I've mentioned before, this deck can run Snorlax as a non X attacker, and personally I think that Snorlax is an underrated attacker in this deck, being a two shot in most situations, and being able to one shot X's if you build your field, you should be able to see how valuable Snorlax can be, especially when combined with Thunderous' energy acceleration and Lugia's ability to apply pressure. With a full field, Snorlax can swing for 180 damage a turn, plus 10 damage for each Deoxys you have in play. If you can attack with a fresh Snorlax, he on his own could quickly net you 4 prizes in 2 turns, which does kind of raise the question of why run Lugia? And well, you're most likely going to take a prize while setting up Snorlax, so a simpler option for taking quick prizes would be to take that first prize, then switch to Snorlax for the next two, then scramble switch to Lugia and reclaim the remaining three. Now, of course, that's in a perfect world, but that, right now, that's the quickest six prize game I can think of. Now, I've said a lot of good things about this deck, but there is one thing that I don't like about it, and that's the energy lineup. The deck has to supply Lightning for Thunderous, Psychic for Deoxys, and Water for Chiron. Plus there's double colorless energy for Snorlax and Lugia, and colorless energy for Lugia to be able to attack, and general acceleration. Now, the problem that this leads to is the whole fact that you cannot rely on basic energy types and keep your total energy numbers down. Now, a standard energy lineup for this deck would be 4 Prism, 3 of the Water Lightning Blend energy, 4 colorless energy, and 2 double colorless. That's 13 energy, and whereas that number isn't too high, it's all special energy meaning that both hammers can hit it, and Enhanced Hammer doesn't have a coin toss associated with it. Now I know that Thunderous can recover and accelerate energy, but only 8 of the energy in this deck are compatible with him. And well, the less of those energies you have in deck or hand, the less chance you have of grabbing energy from the discard pile. Now this is probably needless worry, but a well designed hammer time might be able to stall out this deck. But as I said, this could be needless worry, there's probably more threat from the new Drift Blimp. With all of that said, DTL is said to be THE deck of the upcoming format, with acceleration and low cost damage for the early game, a choice of heavy damage or spread damage for the mid game, and the pressure to start an early end game for your opponent all comes together to make this a big deck to watch out for, and to build against if you can't afford to build it. Which I know I can't. All I can do is hope that this deck doesn't dominate so strongly that the format regresses back to the state of the early season. And with that I'll give you a rest. If you like what you've seen and heard, don't forget to rate, comment and subscribe. 
or you can hit that Twitter button and follow me from there. Until next time, I've been Rasta Joey, you guys are the top percent, peace out.